I know, I know, you don't have any interest in postage stamps whatsoever. You've never resold postage stamps before. And so you're wondering, why the heck should you even watch this video? Well, there's a few reasons. So first of all, I will let you know that I also have never resold postage stamps before. And I also don't have a personal interest in collecting them at all. Now, comic books, yes. Other types of pop culture items, yes. Stamps, no. Just never been my thing. I thought about collecting them when I was younger, but I could just never get myself into it. But one of the things I have consistently mentioned on this channel over the years is the need to try to continue to learn new areas, uh, new niches, and to try to break into them if you could find a good deal. And so, uh, to practice uh, what I preach to you, I have purchased this gigantic tote of postage stamps. I mean, this thing is insane. It's crazy. Uh, this is a uh, to-be-continued video from the prior one where I showed you the comic books that I purchased in a similarly sized uh, tote. Uh, that I had purchased for $30, and this... I purchased for a grand total of 40 bucks. I figured there's no way I could miss with a $40 investment in this and I'll learn a lot during the process. So if you are an expert in stamps, I am going to definitely appreciate and want your help down below uh, in the comment section. Now, another thing and another reason why you should watch this is because when i go through these stamps you're going to see that there are ones that come from all over the world like packets that are organized by country and you may see something that's from you know a country that your ancestors were from and you might want something like this so uh you know if so, uh, if anyone sees anything they like, you could just reach out to me uh, in the comment section or if you want you know, further detailed pictures because I'm not going to open up all of these today. I'll show you all the countries that are there, for example. But you could contact me through email at primetimetreasure, no S at the end, at gmail.com. On Instagram, that's at uh, prime underscore time underscore treasure. And you could also reach out to me through my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, uh, through uh, Facebook Messenger. So uh, what I have done is I uh, spent some time uh, taking the stuff out of here and just processing it and organizing it. Uh, that's always fun to do. The problem is it's very time consuming. And so for an unboxing type of video like this to uh, you know just spontaneously do all that, there'll be a lot of wasted time in there. So I like to process it, organize it, and I'm going to present it to you uh, in chunks. So the first thing that we're going to start with is going through something that, you know, I really like, I enjoy is books. And as you can see here, there are some stamp books. So let me go over some of those. I'm going to stop the camera for a second, uh, just pull this out, and then I'm going to uh, present that to you. And then the other things uh, in the other chunks. So hang on just one second. All right, so let's start with these. These are books. Uh, they don't have postage stamps in them, but they have other types of stamps in them. Some of you uh, who used these in the past may be familiar with them. I'm also starting with them uh, because they were very commonly used in the general public uh, from the 1930s until the 1980s. Uh, and you will come across these at estate sales. Now, I normally pass them up because when I find them, I normally just find one of them. And you're not going to be able to sell one of them. You're going to need to find them in a big bundle like this, preferably filled up with the stamps inside. Now, I have a total count of 25 of them. Uh, I showed you a little sneak preview of these when I uh, first opened the lid uh, of this uh, container in the trunk the other day. But these are the little stamps that people would get them at retail stores and you know gas stations and, and other types of uh, businesses. And what they would do is they would put these stamps in here. Now, these books would fit uh, 1,200 of these stamps. And then what you could do is you could send them in and you could redeem them uh, for merchandise. And so 
you know, it was basically that time's version of, you know, bonus rewards, you know, that you would get like on your credit card where you get, you know, extra, you know, little gifts and stuff that you could, um, you know, redeem your bonus points for. And, uh, you know, depending on where you lived, you could see in the back here, this is specific to my region. It would, um, you know, have some information about places in your area. So people uh, like it for that. The vast majority of these are filled. There are a few of them uh, that are blank like this uh, smaller one uh, over here. But um, I was happy to see that uh, recently someone had sold 13 of this type right here, mostly full, uh, for $90. Now, normally people are selling a smaller batch of them for around 20 bucks, which is what I said the other day when I had um, looked through them uh, in, the, in the trunk when I took the lid off. Uh, but you know, having 25 of these mostly full, uh, I should get my money back uh, for what I paid for this, you know, entire tote and then some just from these books. So I'm very excited. And not only do I have, you know, these you know, mostly filled with stamps, I also have a whole bag filled with uh, extra uh, stamps uh, as well. So just to give you a little more of a close up of these, you know, this is what they would look like. And they'd come in these big, you know, stamp blocks, basically. So um, that's really the only thing that I found that was non-postage stamp related. But again, that's why I wanted to start with that. So let's get into some other books that are related to uh, postage stamps. So this one here is cool. Uh, this is the Discover Stamp Album from 1959. Uh, so I did look this one up. And um, as you'll see in here, when I, when I go through some of the pages, there are no stamps in this particular book. Now, there are other ones I'm going to show you that do have stamps in them. But this one is uh, totally blank. But, you know, it's cool because, you know, when I was a kid, I loved sticker books. So I used to love to get the packs of stickers, put them in the books. And it was like, I was like obsessed with it. It was like, you know, baseball card sticker books in particular. I love them. Uh, so this is a very similar type of concept. There's just so many that you got to try to get and uh, collect. Now, I did see that one of these that had about 250 stamps in them uh, sold for $36. Uh, so I haven't seen one up for market that's totally blank because normally people will put the stamps in them. So that's my first question for all you stamp collectors out there is does this have more value being completely blank to somebody because they could just start it out by themselves or does it have more value having this, you know, some of the stamps actually uh, inside of them. So we've got people watching this video who really know a lot about stamps. Give a shout out to Duncan uh, from Australia. He's a stamp expert. And uh, Don, the auction professor, of course, he sells a lot of stamps uh, over in his store. So go check out Don at uh, the auction professor's channel. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that Duncan told me is that if you find stamps between U.S. stamps from 1850 to 1870, you know, those would be you know, ones that would have a potential to be, uh, you know, have significant value. And then pretty much after that, you know, you're, you're going to kind of have to look them up individually, which could be very time consuming to see if you might have a gem in there. Go on eBay and look at the comps for sold um, stamps. And there are some that sell for tons of money. Uh, one of the things too, is to look for stamps that have errors on them. So mistakes in terms of how they were produced. And uh, that's something that uh, collectors will look for uh, as well. But you really kind of got to be able to dive into the area and know the area to figure out is this a stamp that has a mistake on it or an error and you're only going to figure that out by doing your research now this is a a company minkus that uh, made a lot of stamp collector types of books uh this particular one is only worth about uh, ten dollars or so uh this one dates back to 1962 and as you can see uh, we do have some stamps in them uh of course they are vintage stamps but you know we're not going back to the 1800s on these the other thing that you could see is that these stamps, uh, some of them do have, uh, you know, markings on them that indicate that they were posted stamps. Uh, so they are used uh, stamps and that is going to decrease value. Uh, collectors really like to have mint condition uh, items and we'll talk more about that uh, in a moment. So that's the two uh, soft cover books that I had. Now I did show you in the trunk that there were binders. So let me show you uh, this binder uh, right here. And you can see that the person who owned this, which by the way, let me give you 
a little bit more information that I found, I think, about the person who owned this collection because I was told that she was 80 years old, but I saw, I think her name, it makes sense that it would be her name written all over a bunch of envelopes. I'm not going to show her name, but I did some research. I you know, looked her up, found out she had passed away in 2003 and that she was 99 years old. So I don't know. It's possible. It might have been this person's mother. I'm not sure. Um, uh, but, you know, these things do definitely have some age to them. But you could see here it says all mint and then it says M-N-H. So that means... It's mint, but it was not hinged or never hinged. What does that mean that it was uh, never hinged? Well, first of all, here's what this person is talking about. You could see these are, you know, nice and uh, protected inside of these, you know, little holders here, these little plastic holders. And by saying that they are uh, not hinged, I'm going to take out a little pack from the back of here, which you could see these are called stamp hinges. And it says there's a thousand in here, but but there's not. But as, if I take them out, you can see now these are old stamp hinges. But what would happen? What you would do with these is you would take these uh, individually, and um, you take like one of these off, and you'd affix it to the back of the stamp, and that would allow you to mount it into something like a stamp book or or somewhere else. Uh, the problem though is that that would leave behind a residue or a marking on the back of the stamp and so um, you know collectors don't want to see that you know people who want to pay the you know who are going to pay the premium price they want it without that stuff on there so uh, but you know this is a pretty cool book and there's lots of different um, you know individual stamps that you can uh, look up uh, so uh, but, you know, I just did like a test lookup on like a few of them. So, you know, for example, this one here of Samuel Gompers, um, you know, for the most part with these things, you need to have them in big, uh, what they call plate blocks. So, you know, it's just basically a big, you know, giant um, uh, collection of stamps and like one sheet, a big sheet of stamps. And, you know, often you need to have like 50 or 100 of them or something just to get anything decent. You know, you, some people try and sell them individually. Like, you know, you could sell this one for like a buck or two, but you know, and that's with free shipping. So people are just using their own postage stamp to send it out. But for me, you know, top rated seller, I use tracking on everything. It just doesn't make sense. And time-wise, it's not a good investment. So something like this would probably be something that I would just sell off uh, as a big lot. Uh, so this one here, uh, if you look here, it says it's the uh, the White Ace Historical Album. Now this one comes from 1961. Uh, there was one of these um, that sold um, uh, with some stamps in it for $36. So again, you know, remember I paid $40 for for all this stuff. So uh, that's you know that's if it sells for around that price that's around most of my money back for that. The thing is, you just wanna make sure you're not giving anything away of really uh, of high value. So now this one here, I really like this one. This is the Columbia uh, US plate book. It's a stamp album. Now, when I opened it up inside, by the way, I found like some you know, random stamps uh, sitting in here that were not placed nicely uh, in the binder. But this is what I mean when I'm talking about like a, a sheet of stamps or a block of stamps. This is obviously broken up. The problem with not protecting these correctly is that what happens is that um, if you just throw them in here, you know, over the years, the the glue on the back, they start to affix to one another and they get kind of stuck. So then when you try to pull them out and separate it, they're going to get some, you know, type of damage on them. But this one's pretty cool here. It has all the uh, presidents up to uh, Nixon on there. So I, I like that. And, you know, there's just a whole bunch of like just random ones in here. Here's a bigger sheet uh, as well of stamps. But then when we get into this thing here... Um, you'll see that there's some pages that have some uh, stamps on them. Uh, I don't think most of them had stamps. I mean, see, there's some, like she partly completed uh, the collection. So it's a mixture of uh, blank pages and partially completed uh, pages. Now, uh, this one here, I had to really wipe this down because it was just really grimy and dirty and disgusting and uh, even the sides and everything so I, I would just have felt gross even handling it but it really makes it uh, look um, nice and that's the advantage of having this laminate over it uh, one of these sold recently for $45 on eBay we'll see what happens with it um, you know I showed you kind of, oh let me show you one thing that's cool in here 
if you like Disney stuff, and I know there's a lot of Disney people who watch this. Check this out. Look what I found in here. This is a 1960, this is before Disney World. Donald liked this because he used to work at uh, Disney. And that's uh, that's a Walt Disney stamp for, uh, from 1968. It's four of them. Now, the interesting thing with the eBay comps on this is that somebody listed one of these stamps, just one, and sold it for $143. But that person overpaid and made a mistake purchase, you know, probably someone who just saw it, thought it was some rare Disney thing, didn't do their research and paid that kind of money for it. But, you know, normally for four of these stamps, uh, you'd be lucky to get like 10 bucks out of them. So they really don't go for that much. There, there's, you could find them in blocks of 50 and 100. There's still plenty of them around. So, and that's going to be the case from what I could tell from most stamps and why generally... I have uh, avoided purchasing stamps when I go to estate sales. Not only that, but the other reason is that normally when I come across stamp collections, the estate sale dealer uh, puts this crazy price of like $850, you know, for just a couple of binders. And it seems to me like estate sale dealers do that once in a while with things they think have tons of value but really don't. I see this happen all the time with comic books. They find a couple of old comic books and they put these crazy prices on them that bear no relation to uh, reality. As somebody said in a comment to my prior video about stamps, just because stamps are old does not necessarily mean they're valuable. Very true. Same thing goes for uh, comic books. All right, so there's one more big binder to show you. This is the Comprehensive World Stamp Album by Minkus. This one came out in 1952. Um, now, as you can see here, the uh, top of it has come off, but uh, everything else is still here. So that's obviously going to affect the value. But this is a really cool one because you could see how packed with potential... Uh, stamps this book is. I mean, there's just so many uh, types of stamps that you could put in here. You could see that it is partly filled, but there's just page after page of this stuff. Now, there's a more modern one of these that sold recently for $75. Uh, so, you know, who knows what is going to happen with this one. You know, again, it's tough to say with, with this coming off. I mean, yeah, someone could probably tape it on if they want to. But the real value in this is actually these uh, these pages inside. And uh, they all look to be here and look to be uh, in great shape. So uh, I'm excited about uh, this one too. Uh, just uh, the binders alone, I think there's some uh, nice potential value uh, in them, whether you like stamps or not. All right, so there's just a few other smaller books I wanna show you here. This is a little stamp book that came out in 1970. It's about flowers uh, and plants. And so what you would do is you would just uh, put the little uh, stamps uh, inside of here that corresponded to whatever it was uh, that they were talking about. Uh, most of the pages here have the correct stamps in them. Uh, there's a few of them in which they have uh, uh, come off. This is not something that you know has any value. This would be something that's just like a throw in with other things. Uh, now these two are called um, stock books. They're stamp stock books and Inside of them, there's these like little pouch areas. And so they're you know filled with different types of stamps uh, from, from all over the place. And each of these books look somewhat similar. Uh, the stamps are generally used stamps. I'm not sure, not being a stamp collector, if you would just buy one of these books and they would have stamps in them or if you would just put your own personalized stamps, if they just came blank like this. So uh, for anyone who collects stamps, uh, just let me know that down below. Like, would you just purchase them and they would just have a whole bunch of random uh, stamps in them? I have a feeling they were probably blank and that you just, you know, put in whatever you wanted in there. But again, I'm not sure on that. So uh, that's another reason I'm making the video is because there's uh, people out there who have a lot of expertise in this who could... Uh, who could share and we could all learn together down uh, in the comment section. Okay, so now if you are waiting to see all the stuff from all the different countries and if a uh, country from your ethnic background is uh, is included in this, there probably is. You will not even believe this. Uh, I'm going to just get that ready and I'm going to show you all the different countries. It's really cool. All right, so in these two boxes, there are mostly international stamps. I just left these two pocket stock stamp books up top just to tell you that if I could get 10 or $20 out of both of these combined, I would be very happy and lucky uh, with that. Uh, now, in this box here to the right, what you're going to see 
our stamps in these envelopes divided by country and most of them are alphabetized. It's one of the reasons that I invested into this lot because having this already set for me really saves me a lot of processing time. You could see here that the countries start here at Australia, that one's combined with Canada, and uh, sometimes there's several uh, per uh, envelope and we go all the way back here to uh, Venezuela and who knows there might even be a Zimbabwe uh, somewhere behind this is some miscellaneous stuff um, this one says butterflies but behind that these are mostly foreign stamps that are uh, mixed so there's just multiple different countries uh, together now I'm gonna pull uh, these out right here behind Venezuela because it will help me show you the other countries better by just sliding these back. Now, some of these envelopes are thicker than others, so uh, but most of them are pretty well packed with stamps. Most of them are still uh, sealed. I will open them up uh, per request. If you see, like, you know, if you have, uh, you know, some ancestry from India and you want to see these, I'll open them up and I'll take photos of them and I'll send them to you. So you know, just let me know. But uh, and, and you can see over here, we have some more, like these ones you can actually see through because we have like see-through windows. So we've got Australia over here. So there's some Australia stamps. I always love to see stuff from Australia because it reminds me of my reselling uh, YouTuber friends. So we've got Brad and Jasmine over at Two Aussie Thrifters. Uh, go check them out on their channel. We've got uh, Rob, the Aussie VHS thrifter who I just interviewed the other day. So definitely check that interview out. You wanna learn about VHSs and uh, wrestling figures and all sorts of stuff. Uh, we've got another Brad from Diary of a Flipper. Go check out his channel and Strictly Anything Kathy Rees. So we've got, and many others, there's a lot of people over in Australia doing good reselling work. Uh, and you know, it's cool because uh, we also have some uh, locations that don't even go by the name anymore. Like this one here, you could see it's uh, Ceylon. Now, um, that name doesn't even exist anymore for that country. Uh, it was uh, the former name for Sri Lanka. And uh, that changed in 1972 when Sri Lanka became a republic and uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, II was no longer uh, the head of the country. Uh, now, they still retain the name for things like uh, like Ceylon Tea because that's just such a popular uh, known entity that they didn't want to get rid of that. But most things really changed over to the uh, Sri Lanka uh, name. But let me kind of thumb through this so you can see some of the uh, uh, countries that are in here. So we've got Austria, we've got Argentina, uh, we've, we've got two for Argentina, we've got As uh, Afghanistan, Angola, Albania. They're kind of mixed uh, together there. Uh, Belgium, which is cool. We've got uh, Brazil, uh, we've got another Belgium there, we've got Burma. So we've got some smaller countries here too. Uh, we've got the Bahamas, that's cool. There's another Brazil, so I have to alphabetize this stuff a little more. The British Empire, that's neat. Uh, Cameroon, Bulgaria, uh, there's a bunch of Canada ones here too. And then we've got Central and South America, uh, Chad, uh, Central Africa. So uh, there we got Ceylon again, uh, China, Chile. You know, I was wondering like, you know, I did open this one, this one from China. This one actually doesn't have too many in there. But, uh, you know, I'll show you here. I was wondering, you know, because with postcards, uh, Chinese postcards, ones that depict old China, they could be worth a lot of money because of some of the pictorial scenes. I don't know if that's really so much the case with these uh, old stamps from China. If they have, um, you know, value to them because, you know, they come from or represent uh, old China. I'm not sure. Maybe Don uh, could chime in with that. I doubt it. It's probably one of these things too, where you need to have these things in, you know, in bigger uh, bulk lots. But you know, still, they're still cool to see. How often do you see stamps from China? At least I personally don't. Uh, we've got the uh, the Congo here. We've got Colombia. Um, we've got the, even the Cook Islands here. Uh, Costa Rica. We've got a bunch of Czechoslovakias as well. A whole bunch of them. Uh, we've got Denmark here, Dominican Republic, uh, Dubai. Again, you want to see anything here, just let me know. And I'll show you some more of those see-through windows in a moment so you do get to see some stamps. But uh, Ecuador, let's see, El Salvador, Egypt. Now, I don't know this is not being a stamp collector. Is there a certain country I should really be looking for? Uh, England again, uh, France, France, a bunch of France ones. Uh, we got a bunch of ones from Germany as well. 
I'll show you something cool related to Germany and Poland a little bit later, if I could find it. Uh, Germany, Denmark, and the Netherlands. There's another Germany. A lot of German stamps. Germany. What do I need to look for for Germany? Look how many Germany stamps I've got here. Some more England stamps. Are there any particular stamps by country that I need to look for? I mean, look, you could just feel how many there are in here. Now, some of the stamps, by the way, are like attached to um, uh, former envelopes. And so another question there for stamp collectors, how much does that take the value down uh, of the stamp uh, as opposed to if it wasn't on there at all and it was more freestanding? I would imagine this does take the value down quite a bit. But is it something that's completely worthless? If it has the uh, mark around it indicating that it's been used, like a cancel stamp around it, uh, what does that do to the value uh, as well? So, you know, anything like that, you know, please, uh, you know, please let me know if you have any information uh, about that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see, we've got Greece, we've got Finland, uh, Guyana, we've got Haiti, uh, Hong Kong, Tibet, the Philippines, Israel. Hungary, I'm getting hungry just making this video. Hungry, hungry, got three hungry, hungry, hungry hippos. Look at all this hungry stuff. If you have ancestors from Hungary, this might be a kind of a cool thing to get as like a present for them or you know, a birthday gift, something like that. Indonesia, Iran, how often do you see stamps from Iran? I gotta look at, what does stamps from Iran look like? I'm kind of curious now, let me, Let's see if I could open this up. All right, so these are the stamps from Iran that were in there. Not too many. Like I said, some packages have more than others. Uh, but this is cool. This is the Shah of Iran. This would place this back to like around 1971, early 70s. Uh, this is Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. And uh, there's a few of him here. So uh, it's just neat. You know, you get to see all the different leaders uh, from the other countries really kind of takes you back in time, which I think is one of the things uh, that's appealing uh, for uh, stamp collectors. So uh, I'll put those back in later. Uh, let's see here. We've got uh, some more stuff from Hungary. We've got Ireland. Uh, we've got some from my ancestry here. We've got some uh, Italy uh, stuff here. We've got several of them from Italy. There's Israel again. Yeah, I need to organize this a little bit better. Uh, what do we got there? Jamaica. We've got, uh, let's see, Japan is here too. That's cool, Japan. Kenya, so we've got some uh, African countries here as well. Uh, Malaya, that's a British term really. I mean, it turned to Malaysia in 1963. So it's cool seeing some of these older terms in here. Mexico, Monaco, Mongolia, which is a country I've always been fascinated with. Uh, speaking of wrestling, ever since uh, watching the WWF, there was a wrestler called Killer Khan, and he was uh, said to be from Mongolia, even though the guy who played him was really from Japan. But uh, still, I've always been fascinated with Mongolia and its capital, Ulaanbaatar. I always uh, want to go over there and check it out. Uh, Morocco, uh, Netherlands, New Zealand, Nicaragua. The Netherlands again pops up. We've got Norway, Pakistan, pa Panama. What is that? It's just a random stamp there. Uh, Panama, Paraguay, Philippines. We've got a few Philippines there. Actually, three of them. Uh, Poland. I know there's a bunch of those. I saw. Look, we've got a bunch of Poland ones. You know, along with those Germany ones. So cool. And look, some of these are dated by year. So that is pretty cool. Like some go back to the 60s. Maybe there's some even earlier than that. Who knows? Wow, there's a ton of Poland stamps. What do I need to know about Poland stamps? Stamp collectors, let me know about that. Portugal, uh, Peru. Let's see what else we got in here. Uh, what is that? Pa uh, Pakistan. Look how they spelled Pakistan. That's interesting. Uh, and it looks like that's Palestine uh, too. So uh, that would make sense. That's related. Uh, Romania. Let's see, Rhodesia. How often do you hear about Rhodesia? That's got to be, I would think that's a little unusual. Let's see. Uh, that looks like Rwanda. It should be Rwanda. So that was probably a former name for it right there. Uh, Romania, Spain, got a bunch of Spain and some Switzerland ones, Syria. I mean, gosh, wow. That's amazing how many stamps this person has from all these countries. Look at this. Singapore, uh, Togolese. Uh, wow, that's just amazing. Turkey, Thailand, uh, Uruguay. That makes sense because we saw Paraguay earlier. Uh, UN stamps, that would be United Nations, and uh, Venezuela again. Uh, wow, that's just amazing. Then, here we go. These are ones you could actually see stamps from. So there's the Ceylon uh, ones. Here's some from Poland. Looks really cool. Look at that. They're really neat. You know, again, a lot of them are used, so I don't know 
uh, but not all of them. I'm not sure how much that's going to affect the condition. Um, uh, well, not condition, but the value. Uh, French colonies. I want to get these out of these um, envelopes, by the way. Put them in something uh, much nicer uh, to present because they don't need to stay in these things. You know, these, these they could come out of this. Uh, probably take them out of this, these two, put them in something much nicer for people. Uh, Great Britain. Look at this. This is 50, supposed to be 50 different ones from South Africa. There might be fewer in there. Who knows when we open it up and get to the bottom. Uh, let's see. British colonies. Wow. Pretty cool. There's Rhodesia again. Rhodesia in the house. <laughs> We've got uh, uh, different ones related to trains. So that's cool. Uh, different train ones, different Japanese ones. You get to see some Japanese uh, stamps right there. So that's pretty, pretty neat. Let me slide those down a little bit more. So that's cool. Look at that. Really neat. Uh, British colonies. And um, look at that. Einstein's on one of them, which is pretty interesting. Uh, Antigua. Uh, here's some more uh, African uh, stamps. So we've got Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda. Speaking of uh, Uganda and wrestling, I used to love Kamala, the Ugandan headhunter. So I've been fascinated with that as well. Uh, here you can see, looks like we've got some staining inside of here, which has probably affected the stamp. So this one really got uh, beat up uh, pretty badly. Then there were some other ones, uh, some other countries represented that are uh, outside of these envelopes. And for some reason, she just had them in bags. So if you were waiting to see Korea, well, we do have Korea, but it's just inside these bags. It wasn't inside the uh, envelope. I think I saw Singapore mentioned earlier, but she's got some broken out uh, through Singapore. Uh, then we've got uh, Paraguay again. So here's some Paraguay stamps. This will get a, give you a chance to just see some stamps. Now, these are interesting over here because these are Danzig-related uh, uh, stamps. Now, Danzig was this... Uh, autonomous city-state between Germany and Poland from 1920 to 1939. And I did um, look up some Danzig stamps uh, prior to doing the video, and I saw that there are some with real crazy asking prices. Some of them had errors on it, but I'm really curious um, for stamp collectors watching this, if, if this is something here that you know might have some uh, potential value uh, given that it comes from an uh, unusual uh, area that was, you know, pretty time limited. So, uh, so, you know, I mean, granted almost two decades, but still, um, relative to other places. Uh, let's see, Peru, we've got, uh, India as well. So there's some bunch of different stamps from India. Some of them are together a little bit. Uh, Canada, so we've got some Canadian stamps and look at this, a whole bunch of stamps from, uh, China. Now, most of these that I've opened up, they separate pretty easily, but sometimes they do stick together. And so there are some that are gonna get affected by just being compressed in for so long. And that's, you know, I guess any stamp collector watching this is thinking, well, that's definitely not the way that you should be storing the stamps. Ah, look at here, we've got Iran again. So this is a whole bunch more of Iran stamps. So I could do some consolidating as well. You know, maybe I put up, you know, all the Switzerland stamps together. I'm curious, what do people think and think in terms of the best ways for me to lot these together to sell them? One packet at a time, all the packets combined, do them by continent. I mean, what do you think? What's the best way to go about uh, to go about this? So here we've got some from France. We've got some from Pakistan as well. Really cool seeing all these different leaders and images. We've got some from uh, Ecuador too. So there's some Ecuador stamps. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? Uh, Venezuela. So some of these are you know, still attached to the uh, original mailing envelopes, some not. Uh, here's a big bunch of them here. What are these? I don't even know what these are. These look like just random US stamps. So that's what we've got there, that's US. Uh, here we've got uh, Malaysia again. And yeah, here you could see she had uh, uh, Mela uh, on it or Malaya, and it was uh, crossed out uh, for uh, Malaysia instead when they when it changed the name. So and then we've got some from Turkey, so some more Middle East stuff. And what do we got here? This is uh, 
no, no. It looks just kind of like random stamps. Uh, it says international on them. Francis Perkins. I'm not sure. Just looks like a random kind of assortment there. Then what do we got here? There's another kind of random assortment. Then what do we have over here? In the Netherlands. And then we've got these, which are, they come, these, well, no, these are not in formal envelopes like from a company these probably were just ones the collector put together but here you go again you know most of these are the other countries that i've already shown you but then she has some for boats ships boats different sports some of them again were used animals usa commemorative ones uh, i'm trying to go through them as quick as possible uh, i know it's just a collection this big it's impossible really for me to make it a short video worldwide so these are just multi international ones so all combined in these different things are different animals different fish if you like fish um, uh, different british colonies uh, let's see more british colonies what else have we got here? british colonies british colonies romania it's kind of random one film land then uh, over here let me put these aside so you can see a little bit better uh, here we have some that actually come from official place, like an official company made it. Like here you could see this here is like all different postage stamps from Czechoslovakia, but this was actually made, you know, specifically. And I guess since they're probably mass produced, they probably don't have much value, but, uh, I don't know. Here's some Russian stamps, which is pretty neat. How often do you see stamps from Russia? I mean, I, I don't. Here's some from... Uh, Ceylon again, which is cool. You can see the name uh, names right there. Uh, there's just so many others. I just got to get a seat. All right, I was going to sit down, but then I decided to just do a table layout and pan scan over it. I figure that'll help things go a little bit faster and give you a little bit of a zoom up too, as opposed to me just uh, thumbing through this, which uh, I think takes a little bit longer. But uh, I pretty much had to do that for the ones uh, with the countries labeled on top. Uh, that was just a easier way to do it. And there were just so many of those. Uh, some of these, um, you know, are unused. Some of these are used. Some of these have a little bit in the pack and some of them have a lot in the pack. It just really varies. Uh, just let me know if you're into stamps, you know, and you see these things. Uh, what are you thinking? Are you thinking, oh boy, this is just all a bunch of mostly uh, worthless stuff? Uh, or is this stuff that could have some potential value, you know, and what is the best way to lot it together, you know, if that's what you need to do to get that value? I know by country, but like, for example, you know, for ones like these that come in these little packs, uh, some of which are uh, in, well, at least look to me to be in like mint condition, others of which have been used but you know is there a, a market like for example for this company uh garcelone stamp company and just combining them uh, together and selling them that way uh, so you know i don't know or should you just take these out individually and combine them with their respective countries because i've got you know hungary i've got poland and i could just throw them in there and so i just know in general with collectibles obviously there is value in lotting and that's a way to get some money out of things if you can't sell them off individually. All right, so here's another set to uh, do a little pan scan over. Uh, I don't know anything about these, but they all come from the same company, uh, Mystic Stamp Company in Camden, uh, New York, which is about an hour away from me uh, here in Syracuse. So... Um, the cool thing about them though, is that they are labeled on the back. So it does help with the identification and looking them up. Uh, so that should easily be able to help me figure out uh, things on my own in terms of value. But again, if anyone sees anything here uh, that they uh, know about, let me know. Because if I can't see or find anything here, you know, that's valuable individually, I would probably just lot them up together and sell them as this you know, a little set uh, from this company and hope that some stamp collector out there uh, would enjoy them. And then there are these other ones in these uh, smaller uh, packets, some of uh, which are used and some of which uh, are not. Again, uh, without being a stamp collector and someone actively in the hobby, 
It's just not something I could tell you right now. But again, that's one of the reasons that I purchased it as well is that I want to learn about this more. And I'm tired of coming across stamp collections and seeing them and just not knowing um, just due to not being familiar uh, with it you know, whether or not I'm looking at something that has potential value. So I'm hoping that this experience uh, will help me with that. All right, so this last section here are some miscellaneous items. I really love these. Uh, these are Celebrate the Century uh, stamps. And so they basically came in these packets divided per decade. They came out in 2000. And so here you could see we've got the 1900s and we've got the 1910s. It goes all the way to the 1990s. Now, unfortunately, I am missing, of course, the 1920s. So I have nine of the 10. They need a little cleaning on the plastic, but um, otherwise, you know, they're in great shape. So a pack of 10, so a complete set of these, uh, sold recently for uh, $66, and a set of eight of them sold for $40. So I'm gonna hope that I could get uh, 50 bucks out of these, and um, I'll be very happy with that if that's the case. Um, these here are 50 collector uh, envelopes. They're moisture uh, resistant uh, for putting uh, mint stamps in. Uh, I don't know what something like this would go for. Sometimes people pay up for things that have like uh, vintage packaging in it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. These look pretty generic to me. I looked them up. I couldn't see anything, but um, you know, I'm not sure what these might go for, but it's just a cool little miscellaneous item. Uh, sometimes you will get things in these collections that come in cigar boxes or you know, uh, candies boxes and things like that. So don't forget to look up the boxes to see if they have any value. Unfortunately, these King Edward uh, ones are pretty common and you'd have to have a lot of them uh, to be able to sell them together. And this one is just pretty beat up in terms of having writing on it and, you know, damage to the sides. If it was in nice condition, this box would be worth about 10 bucks, but it's just additional ways to get some uh, value out of things. And you can see in here, we just have a bunch of, you know, miscellaneous uh, stamps. Uh, many of them are still attached to the original uh, envelopes uh, that they were uh, mailed on. So that's the case with uh, those and uh, in the candies box. And in here, it looks like we have some from Thailand. So got to add that back to the countries. And then these here, these crack me up. These are USA ones. Uh, I used to use these as a kid, I remember. And I remember if my uh, mom is watching this, uh, Mama Primetime, I remember she used to put these on like Christmas cards and stuff back in the day. So that kind of throws me back a little uh, seeing those. Then there were just some, I don't know, random sheets here that had uh, stamps on them. And so I'm gonna have to you know, look into them, see if they have any uh, potential value. I do not know. Of course, if you're into stamps, you really know this stuff well, pause the screen and let me know. So that's why I'm uh, showing some of this stuff, you know, a little quickly, because I know you could pause it and the video is already running long. So I want to keep it as uh, short as possible. Uh, then besides that, there are these just big bags filled with random stuff is the best way I could describe it. So there's just random stamps in there. They're not organized by any particular uh, country. I'd really have to pull these out. A lot of them are still attached to uh, envelopes. Uh, some are not though. So you know, I'm not sure. It would just make the video way too long if I pulled all of these out and show them as well. And then there's just, there's just more of them. Like these are all in envelopes and I haven't even taken them out of the envelopes yet. Uh, these like freezer bags, these were actually in there. There were a couple random ones. So I just put the um, envelopes in there. And then I just put the other random stamps in here. So I'm not sure what to do with things like this. Let me know if you're a stamp collector, what's the best way to kind of process it. And then the final thing were these NASCAR uh, toys that I wound up uh, getting. These were just kind of thrown in up top. These things really don't have any significant value. Like I told you when they were in the trunk, I'll just lot them up together and try to sell them off that way. So that's it, folks. Um, I hope that this video uh, does encourage you when you go into 2021 to invest into some other niches that you want to learn more about. Even if you know almost nothing about it, like I am with stamps, 
that doesn't mean you can't start your knowledge base somewhere. You'll make some mistakes along the way, but the important thing is to make sure your investment is sufficient enough that even knowing nothing about it, you should still be able to make your money back pretty easily. And I was able to document for you here that I should easily be able to do that. And this will still be uh, a pretty profitable lot. So you could do that even with things that you don't know uh, tons about. So uh, remember, any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them down below. If you like the video, uh, make sure you hit the like button. I did see that uh, Kathy Rees from uh, Strictly Anything Kathy Rees over in Australia. She said she wants a play in the uh, box of stamps. So I hope she enjoyed this and the shout out. I'll see you back in the next video, everyone. Take care.